made some changes to the Kimbo. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. Today we're doing some modifications to my Kimbo camper, starting with the sink setup. I recently did a few videos talking about things that I like and don't like about the camper, and this is a minor inconvenience. I actually do kind of like how simple it is, but I'm gonna make it a little more complex while still remaining pretty damn simple, and I think it's going to make my life in here using this little water system a little bit easier. So the way the sink is set up now is with a simple swivel hand pump. So right now the water is kind of frozen, but you can see you pull up and water comes out, you push down and water comes out. It's kind of sporadic at times, you get some air bubbles and stuff in there. And it works fine, but when you're brushing your teeth or trying to wash your hands or do dishes, it would be easier with an electric pump. So enter this little Dometic faucet. I ordered this on Amazon during a Cyber Monday sale and it's still probably too expensive for what it is, but it looks nice. It is from Dometic. I have a Dometic fridge and I've used a ton of Dometic products in a lot of my videos in my van as well. So this is a little rechargeable pump. It does have a light on there. Two taps turns it on, one tap turns it off and I have all of the hardware over here. I think I will be able to mount it up with a simple magnetic plate like this right here. The faucet just snaps into place and even while we're bouncing around off-road, I think that magnet is strong enough and it kind of has this ridge on here to hold it in place. So I think this will work pretty well if it happens to bounce around or whatever. I can simply pull off the hose and just like store it somewhere. So this is going to be the first mod for today. We're going to start by removing the current faucet. I'll probably pull everything out underneath the sink and I'm not changing the actual sink bowl today, but that may be something I do in the future. Now I'm gonna start by pulling out this faucet. You will notice that you can kind of adjust the height of it. If you want it to be higher or lower, it's pretty tight in there right now. I'm just gonna remove two screws here and then pull all of the tubing out from underneath. Now that this is loose, it will give me slack to pull the actual tubing out from underneath the countertop here. It was freezing cold last night and I did not have the heat on in the camper, so this thing is almost frozen. Now it will probably be easiest if I pull the water jug out because this tube has some rigid pecs in here, which goes all the way to the bottom of this water jug. Here is the faucet and here is the PEX tube. I think I'll be able to reuse this tube that way the water pickup for the new tube is at the bottom of the water jug. All right, so here's what we're working with now. Got nice open space under here. You could probably fit a larger water jug if you needed more water. I've never ran this thing dry, so I think it'll be fine for now, but there is plenty of space to kind of expand that in the future. Now coming up to the top, I don't really want to be drilling any more holes on here, but I think that may be the best way to do it. Luckily this plate covers the existing hole and the two little holes created by the wood screws. So originally I thought about mounting it over here, that way it's straight on with the sink and then running the tube through this hole with a grommet. But for cleanliness sake, I think I'm gonna keep it where it is and then drill just a small hole in the back here to feed the tube down through to the water tank. If I decide I don't want to use this in the future and I wanna go back to the hand pump, I'll just plug that hole in the back. So I think we're gonna start by putting the sticky tape on here and covering up those holes. Looks like there's also an option to put a little screw through here, but again, I don't wanna drill into this wood any more than I'm already going to do, so hopefully this adhesive over that hole will hold this thing tight. And there we have it. It should be pretty good. Now for the next problem to solve, the hose is gonna come out the back. Unfortunately, on this model, it does not just come straight out the bottom where I could feed the tube through and have no holes here. So I think we'll have the tube come out, do a 90 and then go straight through. I'm just gonna mark it with this wood screw. Got the faucet kind of how I want it positioned and we'll just make a mark, give it a little bit of slack. Now, pilot hole. Now 
Now I just made my first mistake by trying to go up to the actual size that I'm going for and I started splitting the wood a little bit. So I quickly stopped and now we're going to step up with the size just a little bit bigger. One more. And now the final size. All right, the hole is now cut. Luckily, it didn't actually split out on the bottom, so still looking decently clean. And yeah, it's about the perfect size for the tubing that I'm choosing to use here. I am using tubing that was not included. I just got some food grade silicone, I think it's a quarter inch hose. That way it is long enough to reach down to the bottom of the tank. So I will put the hose onto the faucet. Looks pretty good. Now the original idea that I had was to take the hose, this is the included hose that came with it. I was gonna take this hose and put maybe like stainless nuts or something on here, that way it weighs it down and it will sit at the bottom of the tank, that way I can use all of the water. But instead, what I'm gonna try is somehow pull this PEX off of here, put the tube into the PEX, that way this thing is sitting rigid all the way at the bottom of the water tank. And then I'm gonna have to find a way to kind of seal it onto that. And hopefully with the different diameters, it still won't have any problem sucking up water through this hose. So this to the bottom of the tank and we'll see if it works. All right, so I decided to cut the PEX fitting that's on here because the inside diameter of the fitting is almost the same as this tube. That way I can stick this into the water tank, the hose will run to the bottom and the rigid PEX will hold it in place. So it should be a nice low pickup on there. Slide this into the water tank and we should have some hands-free water coming out of this sink here in a second. Freshly filled water, pickup tube in. That should be good. Here's what it looks like underneath. Now let's see how it works. Oh yeah. That's pretty perfect. It's not like spurting water out like the hand pump does. It's not gonna splash all over the sink area. I'd say that looks pretty damn good. And now for the next thing that I'm thinking about changing. I have these baskets here, storage baskets. Love them, you need storage in a small space like this. However, after cramming stuff like jackets into these over time, they kind of get deformed and it doesn't look the greatest. So I'm going to simplify these even more, including this one. This one's actually like screwed into place on the bottom. So I've come up with a solution for this and we're gonna test it out. So now with the boxes removed, my idea for this is to take little eyelets like this guy right here, probably do three of them on each side and then put these black bungees in there. So that way I can just sort of cram stuff in there like clothing and jackets and it will all be held in place with these bungees when I wanna pull it out just yank them out. This is gonna kind of force me to be even more minimal in here because generally, as of right now, all of these things are just used as like junk drawers. I'm just constantly throwing stuff in there and that's not a good way to live when you're traveling a lot and you just have a bunch of useless stuff in here. So it will make me think about the gear that I have in here. It'll make it cleaner and simpler. So I'm gonna measure these out. Hopefully not mess up the wood in here. Just put little eyelets in and it will look new in just a second. Now I just set the depth of this drill bit with a little piece of painter's tape so I know how far I can drill before I actually punch through the back. Hoping I don't do that here. Got six holes to drill. So luckily I'm doing this at Ryan's shop because he's got a bunch of like grinders and stuff. So we're actually grinding off these little eyelets that way they're not gonna poke through the back. I should be able to bury the threads up to the smooth part of the shank. Okay. 
All right, so for now, this is the completed look. I recess these back a little bit and I should be able to still put storage baskets in here if I wanted to, but it's not really what I'm going for. So let me throw some gear in here, test it out. So there's the new look, all of the gear just kind of consolidated down and it still looks pretty good. Another thing I could do is put smaller bags like Vertex stackables in here for bigger items. I can just pop the bungees off and I think it looks pretty good. The real test will be driving around, especially off road to see if these bungees will actually keep everything in place or if stuff will be thrown around here. So I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Next step will be this. I'm not sure what I want to do for this yet, but let's figure it out. All right, guys, it is the next day now, and my solution for this outside bin compartment here, it's kind of anticlimactic. The bungees that I have here are a little bit too long to put eyelets on the inside here, and I'm not sure if I want to leave it this way. I'm actually really liking this, though. I did drive around maybe like 50 to 100 miles since the last update and all of this stuff has completely stayed put given that wasn't driving around off-road but i really dig this look for the shorter bungee cords i just wrapped them around and unfortunately i can't wrap them down any lower than this point here because this is where the actual base of the bed lies so i just wrapped them around there once i get back home i have larger vertex stackables and i think i may have one that will fit here pretty perfectly if not, I could get one that fits the base and then add a couple of them there. And I will probably grab a vertex stackable or two just to throw in here. That way things look a little bit neater. And if you need something, you reach in, pull it right through the bungees. Or if it's too big, you can just simply pull a bungee off and then reconnect it. I kind of like the look. It fits my style inside of the Kimbo. I wasn't a fan of like the fancy-ish looking baskets when they get deformed and everything. So simple gear storage. I'm not going to have a bunch of junk in here anymore because it's like hidden away. It's kind of the same philosophy as the baskets on here. Because these aren't cabinets, they're baskets. I see exactly what I have and it keeps me from just like shoving random junk in these. So I like this. It looks really good and I'm pretty happy with it. Both the new storage solution and of course the faucet Luckily, it did not freeze last night. So those are the mods to the Kimbo. Now, if you guys have any questions on the things that you saw here, let me know in the comments down below. Maybe you could think of some other ideas for like the outside storage solution over here. One thing that I also thought of is the nets that I've added to the walls in the Kimbo. I could probably add some of those over here, but I'm kind of digging the bungee cord look for now. I'll keep you guys updated on how this stuff goes as we are traveling from Pennsylvania back to Minnesota actually, and then back to Colorado. I think I'm gonna like it though. So that's all that I had for today. If you guys are new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every week. As always, thank you for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.